All right. All right. We are live. We are here. It's technically on my channel, Movie Nerd Reviews, but whatever. This is welcome people uh, for anyone who's actually watching for like the, what is it, like the one person that's watching? Oh, there's two watching now. Okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to cut that out so that it doesn't echo. But uh, yeah, so this is the official... I, I guess this, this is the first, like, I don't know, I've never yeah. really done one of these yeah. before. So this is the first official Morgan J. Freeman Awards. Freeman. Yes. Uh, the, no, no, no jokes in there about, um, yeah. yeah. But uh, so for those of you who don't know, I mean, I feel like you should at this point, if you're on this channel, it's me. I'm Dom, the movie nerd. It says it in the name right there, right there. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I'm here with, I guess you could call him my co-host, Chris. I've got way too many Chris's that are co-hosts. That's just like a thing that, that I've got going. Like I've, I've, I co-host a podcast with another Chris. I've got a, a friend, a name, another friend who's Chris named Gay. I've got you, who you're just like, oh man. Anyways, Chris, yeah. introduce yourself. Anyways, I'm Chris. I'm one of the coolest motherfuckers you will ever know. So um, cool you can't even pronounce motherfucker. Exactly. That's that's how cool I am, man. I'm on another fucking level. I'm very happy to be a part of this. Um, we just came up with like our own award show. We've got some sick. Because the Oscars movies. suck. The Oscars are like the Oscars fucking wishes. They were the Morgan J. Freeman Awards. That's Seriously. How are. And yeah, it's gonna. It, we're just here to announce our nominations um, in a couple weeks to maybe a month. Um, we're not exactly sure we'll have our winners and we'll all like announce those. There's a bunch of us that voted, you know, we, we really just, I feel like put all our passion and, and love for movies into our nominations. And yeah, I think um, it's, yeah, I think it's safe to say that, um, a big part of being a movie lover is the awards. This is kind of like our NFL. This is kind of like our, uh, Super Bowl, for lack of a better word. And since we always get fed up with what we're presented to be, you know, quote unquote, the official awards thing we just decided to make our own because fuck it um yeah. before we start we do have to give a quick rip to the other two members of our faction uh, mike sweeney and nick andres were unfortunately unable to make it tonight due to official obligations and i also wanted to give a shout out to the three other people who also contributed to the nomination that being ezra cribero jake zembauer and nathaniel a hart um as we strenuously went through each and every one of our nominations, we got a decent amount of categories to go through. So once we get started, we're pretty much just going to roll through. Um, we'll announce the categories. It'll switch back and forth between myself and Nick. Uh, Chris, wow, tired brains. Yeah, um, one of my then, fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> it even says it in the goddamn corner of your screen. But I got uh, fucker, you got Nick. That's right. Cool. <laughs> we each get our one for the night. So yeah. yeah. So. Chris, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go with these nominations. So, Chris, right. what are we going to start off with? Uh, we're starting off with best visual effects. I'll let you All go right. ahead and take it away. Cool. Yeah, visual effects. Other, in other words, what movie has the biggest and best CGI? So, the official Morgan J. Freeman selected five as voted on by the eight members of our community now. Well, technically... Yeah, as decided by the eight members of the community. I'm going to stop at the build. So, the official five nominees for best visual effects are... 1917, Ad Astra, The Avengers Endgame, The Lion King, and Pokemon, Detective Pikachu. The only thing I have to say to those nominees is, fuck yeah, no Irishman. Because as much as I love that movie, the visuals in that movie are fucking garbage. I'm sorry, <laughs> if a YouTuber with a deep can, can use a deep fake and make your entire fucking 300 million dollar budget look like a joke then that that's worrisome right there netflix sure. that's worrisome yeah all right so uh chris any thoughts to those noms or i'm yeah i, I i'm satisfied with these nominations you know yeah, yeah they're pretty good, they're pretty good. I'm actually, yeah i i, I definitely i definitely like i'm i'm not gonna say I'm surprised. I'm a little shocked that Detective Pikachu like made it in, but I'm also like happy. It's one of those few things where yeah. it's like, hey, good surprise. I actually really like the visual style and how they utilize the Pokemon in that world because I feel like a big part of visuals is that um, it's always just whichever movie has the biggest spectacle. But if there's one thing I learned, it's that big spectacle does not equal good looking visuals because Rise of Skywalker, yuck. Um, <laughs> all right, so moving on to the second category. Best sound. Um the nominations for best sound are 1917, Ad Astra, The Lighthouse, Midsummer, and Waves. Yeah, Waves. 
definitely a movie that I feel like Waves was, don't die. was not recognized. No, that's the Dead Don't Die, my friend. But Waves, a movie that was definitely not recognized by the Oscars at all. Understandable, a late A24 entry. But hey, the Oscars just like snubbing A24. Like, they like snubbing everybody else. But they gave Harriet a nomination because who the fuck saw Harriet? Who saw that movie? <laughs> Um, all right, so the next category. Best makeup. Best makeup. I actually have to scroll through. All right, best hair and makeup. The official Morgan J. Freeman nominees are Bombshell, The Dead Don't Die, The Irishman, Joker, and Rocket Man. Yeah. Good, some good stuff. Irishman. I did like the makeup in the Irishman very, very much more than uh the CG effects, which still made uh 20 year old what was supposed to be a 20 year old looking robert de niro look 50 and yet i was supposed to believe that he had a wife and a newborn kid god damn it Netflix, get your shit together um yeah so if i'm pegging any like immediate winner out of that my go-to would be either dead don't die or joker um if i'm um bleh. i didn't watch bombshell but i know that like it's like outside of the stuff done with megan kelly it's like oh typical like period piece, yeah. froofy hair pieces. So I, I would mostly just go with those two. That was what my vote would be between. All right. So continuing on, what's the next category? Next category is best documentary. Um, the nominations are Apollo 11, Fire, Homecoming, a film by Beyonce, Knock Down the House, and Leaving Neverland. Well, I haven't seen any of those. Um, Wait, which Fire one got nominated? The Netflix one or the Hulu one? Netflix. Okay, never mind. I yeah, did the, watch that Hulu one. The one's called Fire Fraud. That's right. That's right. Okay, I did watch the Netflix one because the whole thing was that was actually one of the first two movies I watched. I, I couldn't remember if I watched the Netflix or the Hulu one but I, because I was high and fell asleep for most of it. But I remember I actually watched the Netflix one. The Hulu one I was completely asleep for. But the Netflix one I actually did watch. But if, if I was to vote for one of them, be like a true Academy voter and vote for movies that I haven't seen, I would definitely vote for Leaving Neverland. <laughs> yeah man because that's like next what category. the oscars do <laughs> uh next category is best foreign film best foreign film let me find this shit gotta scroll Threat through document. okay yeah okay got it oh okay i actually have seen like some of these <laughs> um so the nominees for best foreign film are climax i lost my body pain and glory Parasite and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Holy shit, I've seen three of these. If, if, if I was actually doing my due diligence, I would have seen all of these, but I've seen three of those, so I'm counting that as a win. Um, my vote, oh, that's actually really tricky because, I mean, my favorite out of those three is Parasite, but if I'm voting for which one, like, I'd like to, to like, just just cause, like, I'm, I'm between Climax and I Lost My Body. Oh my god, yeah, we're actually no. getting comments. We're getting comments. Ryan, what's up, dude? Sorry, I'm just commenting on like my Zeta people, just commenting and being trolls. But I'm, I'm, I'm really happy some people are actually watching this. It actually makes me happy. No, it's Yay, I have somewhat of a following. Um, but yeah, so Chris, <laughs> if you had to pick out of those five, which one would you go with? All right. Category is for best... No, 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 film. hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Which one out of those five, before we go on to the next one, out of those foreign film, which one would you pick if you had to? Oh. Um, for documentary? No, for foreign. Oh, sorry, you like cut off. Yeah, no, it's it's lagging a decent amount. Um, are you still there? Can you hear me? Anything? Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. So, which one would you pick for a foreign film? Oh, for foreign film, um, Parasite, easily. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Parasite's like amazing. Parasite. I mean, it, but, but, but the only reason why I wouldn't want to go with that is because like it seems like such an obvious lock to win best pick, uh, like just for like one of the best films of the year. That like for that category, I would just want to kind of go with like an underrated one. That's like Roma winning best foreign film last year, even though like it had a very decent shot at winning it it's like really you can't give that one to cold war which which would not have a shot at all for picture because when roma wins best picture you know 
but hey, but sure. if it makes sense, if we're, if we're going by traditional Oscars logic, then Parasite's going to win the actual foreign film as the pity consolation prize for when it loses picture in 1917. Uh, all right, now we are moving on. Okay, next category is for best animated film. And the nominee is Body, Missing Link, and Toy Story 4. Got it. Um, all three solid choices. Again, I'm really sad that Klaus, which is the best animated movie of the year, didn't make it on. And also that we were, unfortunately, this is one of the years where we had to do three animated movies, not five, because this year was another garbage year for animation. But I got to say, there were a few ones that yeah. stuck in there under the radar. Um, I'm a little bit sad that we couldn't get in. My under my other underrated hit, which is the Adams Family remake, I really, really like that movie. But for what's going to win, like, Toy Story 4 is going to win the Oscar, but I actually do find it funny that, like, it's it's one of those situations where it's like there's no precursor, just everybody knows it's going to win because Missing Link won the Golden Globe and Klaus won the Annie Award, so it's like, wow, that's really just going to show that, like, Disney just buys everything. Um, all right, so... I really like Toy Story 4. Um, no, I, I like it. It's really good. Film of the year. Uh, yeah. um, it, no, I, I'm saying, like, I really like... By far, as I lost my body, I yeah, I, that one's I, really I good. Loved. I lost my body. It's really, really good. Um, yeah. What's it called? All right, yeah, let's move on. So, um, what's the next category? Best costume design. Best costume design. I have to find it. All right, okay, I got it. Wow. Okay, this is easier than I thought. I hope this isn't like too unentertaining. I'm trying to keep this going solely based on. My whatever yeah, brain yeah, cells we'll just, I have we'll left that are running around, in my like, brain. Um, all right, so the five yeah. nominees for best costume design are Dolomite is My Name, Jojo Rabbit, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Rocket Man. Uh, weirdly enough, and this is probably going to sound super shocking, um, I mean, it's really not, but uh, yeah, no, my number one for that one is Dolomite is My Name, no question. But Rocket Man, I'm not going to lie, is a close second. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I like a lot of those. Um, uh, next category is best production design. And right. the knees are 1917, The Lighthouse, Midsommar, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Paris. Ooh, this is kind of like a best picture duo for me because I'm literally torn between Hollywood and 1917. Do we give it to Hollywood for the art of, for recreating a beautiful artificiality or 1917 for creating like just a great realistic landscape? Yeah. Constant struggle. I think I'd give it cinema. to 1917 first. Yeah. I got the end of the day. I got to go 1917 for that as well. Even though I, I Hollywood as a movie, Hollywood's like a much. I mean, I love 1917, but Hollywood's, like, amazing. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Good shit. Um, next category is Bean. What's that? Say that again. I didn't hear yeah. you. Best. It's best scene. Oh, category. best scene. Okay. Got it. All right. Just let me find that. These are all out of order. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Okay, got it. All right, so best scene. This is another thing that we added for best standout scene in a movie, or I feel like we should retitle this best memeable moment in a movie. How long before that becomes a thing, and how long before people get mad at that and make that a thing like the best popular Oscar? <laughs> All right, so the nominees for best scene in a movie are the apartment argument for marriage story has become the source of many memes. The Spawn Ranch scene in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The bunker scene in Parasite. Um, the piano man or the songwriter in Under the Silver Lake. And True Love Waits from Waves. Now, uh, Chris, actually, this is weird. So and this is probably going to sound like really dumb considering I literally just watched Waves. But which scene from that? from waves was that scene are you it's, talking like the, the b scene oh at the end okay no, okay true love is the montage. okay so and that's like the, the i'm guessing yeah. that's like the name of the song that plays yeah. they're under it okay got it I yeah know that. yeah it's it's a radio head song it's yeah um, got it 
All right, so next. The next category is best ending. And right. the nominees are Avengers Endgame, The Lighthouse, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite, and Uncut Gem. So weirdly enough, and this and this will probably be because like usually when I think of ending, it depends on like what takes it up, but I actually don't think that I had Parasite in my final five for ending, only because when I thought of it, I just thought of like kind of the after effect for once like all the craziness that went down. I don't Same. know, like, only because the third, unlike a lot of people who like regard that movie as like perfect, like the third act of that movie is still a little bit problematic to me. So that's why like I couldn't like quite qualify it as like one of the best endings of the year. It was really good, but just like the rest of that movie was fucking amazing. But yeah, couldn't quite qualify it for yeah. All right, so next category. Uh, best original song. All right, this will be fun. So we only have, again, another three nominees. Thank freaking God, because you asked me, there are too many nominees per year. And it's another category that like just allows in a lot of shitty movies and allows them to be Oscar nominees, like Oscar-nominated Fifty Shades of Grey, and now Oscar-nominated Aladdin. Ugh. Anyways, but we don't do that here at the Morgan J. Freeman Awards. So our three nominees for Best Original Song are Control, from her smell, turning teeth from under the silver lake, and Glasgow or no place like home from Wild Rose. We only had one nominee in common with the Oscars this year, which is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like those. Uh, the next category is best soundtrack, and the nominees are the Beach Bump, Book Smart. Climax, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Waves. Ooh, all good choices. All very, very good choices. Like this was, I think we could both agree, this was a strong year for movie soundtracks. Like really, really strong year. Like that's like that's already a category that like the Oscars should have done a while ago because like score is great and all. Like score is like the is like the backbone to movies. Not really, but it's like one of many many different organs that make up the human body that is movies but soundtracks are something that has definitely become like part of like kind of like almost like a different organism in and of itself and they do like comprise of like you usually like it, it a bad soundtrack will just be like a list of really obvious pop songs that like kind of just play in order to distract people and still keep them invested but a good soundtrack and literally help define your movie's identity so yeah take notes oscars we're sure. doing something that you guys aren't all right so next category Best score. Best what? Best I didn't score. Hear you. Okay, best score. Thank you. Sorry, it's just sometimes your stream cuts in and out. All right. Let me find yeah. it. Best score. Best original score. So, oh, you motherfucker. Chris, I love you, but I told you, just because this guy wants to go by his respectable name, we are not doing that because his fictional his his <laughs> nickname is one of the greatest names i've ever heard like who, who could have a nickname like that and, and be legitimate i'm just saying so the nominees for best original score are thomas newman for 1917 randy newman for merit story the two newmans got nominated this year uh daniel lopatin aka one oh tricks point never for uncut yeah. gems michael abels for us and Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross for Waves. It's so funny, too, because like I didn't think that, like, because I was so wowed by Reznor and Ross's score for Watchmen this year that, like, I forgot they actually did a movie score, too. And then I listened to the score in Waves. I'm like, God fucking damn it. Is there anything that these guys can't do? Like, holy shit. And I had already rewatched Social Network a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. Um, yeah, those guys. Yeah. I can't wait. When are those guys going to do a Christopher Nolan score? Or is he just going to be with Han? Well, because um, this new movie Tenet, this is like the first movie that like Nolan is not doing a score with Han with Hans Zimmer. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, they would they would work great with, with Nolan. yeah that would that would be like um, a badass team. All right, so the next category. Best editing, and the nominees are 1917. The Irishman, Parasite, Uncut Gem, and Waves. 
so this is going to sound weird, but only because from what I saw, there's only like, from what I saw, like one known edit. And because 1917 is more of like a cinematography standpoint, because there really is so little actual editing in that movie, my vote personally would be Uncut Gems. But that's just me. Uncut Gems is actually second pick. My picks waves. You know, I was, that's my favorite movie of the year right. in general. <sighs> the, the only, my only problem with Waves is Waves... Waves again. It's 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 got that like that montage feel that I know like a lot of people like about like a lot of eight that a lot of like over stylized movies use. But like there's half the time where like the camera's just spinning around and around and around and around. But I'm like I get it. The camera's spinning, but like and and it's got like the usual like motion tracking shots that like A24 loves using. And like the color palette is gorgeous. But like I'm like editing. I'm like nah. With what they yeah. do with uncut gems, it's like nah. It's not even a contest. But uh, yeah, so moving on. So if I had to take a guess, yeah. I, w- I would hu- I would hu- hesitate to guess that cinematography is next. Yeah, cinematography. Uh, all right, cool, nice. I love it when I can predict the next step ahead. Um, yeah, so this also made waves. Ha! Uh, see what I did there? Um, because uh, the one of our nominees got in over who I thought was going to get in, and I was super happy because the lighthouse is awesome. But the nominees. For best cinematography are Roger Deakins for 1917. <sighs> Damn. Uh, Benoit Debbie for Climax. Yaron Blaschke for The Lighthouse. Robert Richardson for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Drew Daniels for Waves. See, I would nominate Waves for cinematography, even if it is just mostly spinning camera and montage. But I have a question, Chris. So were you also confused when... Rodrigo Prieto got another nomination for The Irishman because he absolutely deserved it, I thought, for Silence, and it was a crime against humanity that cinematography was, like, the only nomination that Silence got. But for The Irishman, I was like, this is this yeah. movie is not doing anything I, that I, I haven't seen think before. I the movie's actually really well shot, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's awards worthy, this cinematography. Yeah, it, it's very well shot. Like, it does, like, what any movie needs to do, but, like, there's nothing in that movie cinematography-wise that really stands out to me. Like, the most impressive thing to me is the three-camera rig that they did for the visuals. But again, I feel like that would qualify more for, like, a visual standpoint than a cinematography standpoint. And they couldn't even do that right, but... Um, yeah. So, all right. So, next, moving on. Uh... Next category. Next category is best cast, and the nominees are The Irishman, Little Women, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Okay. The one thing I will say is, even though I think Infinity War had a better use of its cast than Endgame, I still think Endgame should have gotten in there for a cast because of how they utilized the core group of Avengers. But whatever, I'm a Disney shell. I, I, I like those big fat Disney okay. checks that I get. So the next category is worst performance. Oh yes, a, a, a category that is exclusive to the Morgan J. Freeman Awards, uh, as, as descended from our predecessors. But this is something that we like to do because you know we, the Golden Raspberries award the worst of the year but the golden raspberry yeah. somehow if that's even possible have become even more of a joke in recent years but here at the morgan j freeman awards we like to award give out the one award for who we feel truly truly defines just the worst of 2019 you know just the, the, don't worry we there are plenty of bad performances a year but we always got to reward that one where it's just like wow how the fuck did that happen and so and, and the best part is about the worst performance is that we don't discriminate based on gender. It is not an act. There is not a worst actor or actress thing. We just combine everyone into one category. It's all an it's even true. playing field it's for true. who sucks the most. So with that being said, the nominees for worst or in our case, fucking terrible performance of 2019 are James Corden for Cats, Jeremy Seville for Loquisha, Hero Finds Tiffin for After, John Travolta for The Fanatic, and Rebel Wilson for Cats. I, I, I guess the only thing that I can say here is, uh, wow, James, you really had to, you really had to be that fat pussy, and still be in Cats. Um, of course, I was never going to pull that joke off as well as Ricky did, but hey, you know, word award ceremony, and you know, hosts got to rip sure. off other hosts. It's how Hollywood works. But anyway, so moving on to the next category. Next category 
is for best original screenplay. And the nominees are Noah Baumbach for Marriage Story, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Bong Joon Ho and Han Jin Won for Parasite, Ronald Bronstein, Ben and Josh Safdie for Uncut Gems, and David Robert Mitchell for Under the Silver Lake. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pow- with the exception of Marriage Story, that's a powerhouse stack up right there. That is a powerhouse fucking stack yeah. up right there. Like I legitimately wouldn't know who to choose yeah. between those four. Um the one thing I will say is that even My though the light person. Yeah, for for me, like out of those four, I'd probably have to go Hollywood, probably, but only because I'm such a Tarantino fanatic. Like, I legitimately don't like wouldn't know just based on like level alone. But the one thing I will say is that for all the technical and acting praise that the Lighthouse is getting, I do think that the most under overlooked part of that is its screenplay because versus well i don't think 1917 screenplay is the strongest only because of its simplicity because if you think it's about not, it like there's no. there's nothing really that stands out about that movie from a writing standpoint but the lighthouse i actually do think that like there's a lot of intricacies and com- and a little complexities that go into that screenplay specifically where it's like you could have all the technical brilliance in the world but if that story doesn't work out first and foremost then you're dead in the water um with those mermaids that Robert Pattinson was fucking, or was he? Um, yeah. So moving on, we got best adapted screenplay. Now uh, I'm not going to lie. The, I usually hate adapted screenplay compared to original screenplay, but this year we actually got some decent nominations, I would say. So with that being said, the five nominations for the Morgan J. Freeman awards are Noah Harpster and Micah Fitzerman blue for a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Steve Zalian for the Irishman Taika Waititi for Jojo rabbit. J.C. Lee and Julius Ona for Loose, and Greta Gerwig for Little Women. Um, my I, um, preference out of I just those. want to say I'm so happy that like, we nominated Loose for like adapted screenplay. Definitely. Um, that might actually... Here's the thing about... That movie didn't even make my top 10 of the year, but that might honestly just be like my favorite screenplay of, of, of 2019. Like the, the script for that movie is, is so fucking brilliant. Ambiguous and the, the dialogue's amazing and it's a shame that like you know the academy just kind of and just a lot of will just kind of like slept on that movie that movie's incredible yeah yeah so definitely i have not gotten a chance yeah i have not gotten a chance to watch loose yet but it's one of the the it's the other calvin harrison jr lead performances here i feel really bad because like that guy didn't impress me at all and it comes at night and then he had two back-to-back performances both one of which was fucking yeah. incredible the other one i heard was not quite as great but equally as great and I'm, i really wanted to give that a chance because that director julius ona i thought got very unfairly shafted after the disaster that was the cloverfield paradox but i think that guy's got a bright future ahead of him um yeah. remember again he did not direct that episode of black mirror correct Uh, no, that no, that was Dan. That was Dan Trachtenberg, the director of Ten Cloverfield Lane, who yeah. did Play Test, which was the episode with Wyatt Russell. Okay, that's what it was. I feel like Julius Ona could direct yeah. an episode of Black yeah, yeah. Mirror, though. All right, so moving on. What's after adapted screenplay? Next is voice performance. Ooh, fun! Damn, I was kind of hoping I would get that, but you take that one. <laughs> All right, the nominees for best voice performance are Josh Brolin for Avengers Endgame. Tony Hale for Toy Story 4, Tom Hanks for Toy Story 4, Sting Link, and Mark Ruffalo for Avengers Endgame. Nice, nice. Uh, I guess it would technically consider, be considered a little bit of a cheat for Ruffalo for Avengers, but he just 90% of the movie with him, he's in that damn motion capture suit as the Hulk, so he's the voiceover. And as for Brolin, man, you gotta you gotta, you gotta be impressed when you're technically playing a different character, the less interesting version of that character, and you still knock it out of the goddamn park. It's so funny, too, because the first time I watched Endgame, I was like, oh, man... It's a different Thanos. No, that's going to take away from it. And I didn't nominate Brolin the first time. But then on my many, many rewatches of Endgame, I'm like, oh, fuck, he's still great as Thanos, even if it's not like the Thanos that we fell in love with in Infinity War. But anyway, so moving on from voiceover. Next is best Supporting Actor for Comedy. All right, Best Supporting Actor Comedy. Oh, so we're going to do Director Last... Um, We do the comedies... 
the comedy acting and then director and then the oh, okay director. got it Ooh, very interesting all right so in that case best supporting actress in a comedy um again some very good choices here although one for one movie that i was actually pretty shocked that it didn't end up being somebody else but so with that being said the five choices for the morgan j freeman award for best supporting actress in a comedy are scarlett johansson for jojo rabbit billy lord for book smart thomas and mckenzie for jojo rabbit Marvel Robbie for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Park So Damn for Parasite. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a precursor here at the Morgan J. Freeman Awards, we split things up based on drama and comedy, and we actually put the comedies and the comedies and the dramas and the dramas. So even if you're a musical, if you're a musical drama, you can put in the drama. And yeah. if you're a musical comedy, you can put in the comedy. So there will be no Martians, no American Hustles, no Big Shorts, although Big Short technically was a comedy. But it should have won over the Martian, anyways, because yeah. that was like the only movie in that category, if I'm remembering correctly. That was like, what are you talking actually, about? That was the funniest like, movie that year, The Martian. Oh yeah, Matt Damon cracking jokes as he grows potatoes. Hilarious. Uh, anyways, uh, Ridley Scott, man, he really needs to be yeah, man, in comedies, you know. Well, well, that and fucking jerking off to androids, the but counselor. oh yeah, some good um, shit right there. All right. The nominees for best supporting actor comedy. Are Song Kang Ho for Parasite, Alessandra Nivola for Art of Self Defense, Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Wesley Snipes for Dolomite Is My Name, and Keith L. Williams for Good Boys. Was he really that good in Good Boys? Like, I, I wanted to watch Good Boys. I really wanted to, but like, I don't know. Like, I just had like such a bad taste in my mouth from comedy. And like, I every, you know, every like couple months, I just got to take a break from movies for a little bit. And that was like during my break month. So I always feel bad for the movies that hit during then. But it's like, I don't know. And I heard Good Boys was a lot better than those trailers made it out to be. So I don't know. I don't want to write it off immediately. Yeah, it, it, it's a much movie and and funny movie that yeah. I think the trailers for it made it out to be but Keith L. Williams is, is the best part of that movie. Yeah, um, I, I watched Booksmart right, so and I'm like, I've already yeah, got that. I'm like, I watched Booksmart and I'm like, I already got one super bad ripoff with girls. I don't need another one for um, I, I don't need another one for another one with little kids. But anyways, so moving on to Best Actress Comedy and yes, Dustin, <laughs> we put Keith L. Williams over Martin Lawrence and Skylar Gisando. Get over it. But um, for our nominees for Best Actress in a Comedy, we have Anna DeArmas for Knives Out, Caitlin Dever for Booksmart, Beanie Feldstein for Booksmart, Lupita Nyong'o for Us, and Samara Weaving for Ready or Not. I personally am very, very happy that Samara Weaving is in for Ready or Not, because that movie is just amazing on so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah, uh, uh, wait, how the fuck did that? Um, okay, that, that's the one thing I will say. How the fuck did that not make it in for best ending of the year? That's like one of the greatest endings I've seen in like modern memory. No, the ending of Ready or Not is amazing. It's yeah. so the, good. Yeah, it's so the ending of that good. movie. Uh, all right, yeah. so act um, comedy over to you. The all right, uh, we got Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Jesse Eisenberg for The Art of Self-Defense, Andrew Garfield for Under the Silver Lake, Matthew McConaughey for The Beach Bum, and Eddie Murphy for Name. All right. Um, yeah, not too many. And then next is director. Yeah, just like talking about actor comedy for a second. Like, there's not too many. Well, again, the only thing is there is I didn't see Art of Self Defense. So, if I remember correctly, I just had Roman Griffin Davis in for Jojo Rabbit. But yeah, I'm sure Art of Self Defense was good. I don't know what. Like, I didn't even get a chance to watch a trailer for that movie. So, like, I literally can't comment on it at all. So, moving on. So, as the break between the comedy, the yuck yucks, and the drama, we've got Best Director. And the nominees for Best Director are Ari Aster for Midsommar. Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite, Benny and Josh Safdie for Uncut Gems, and Trey Edward Schultz for Waves. I'm actually shocked no Mendes for 1917. Didn't guess it weird. Didn't have enough votes. Legitimately, I'm shocked. Yeah. I, I will say I'm a little bit pissed that like everyone's like going after Mendes. It's like, did you guys watch 1917? Like that's it's probably the best directed movie of the year. Like I don't know. <laughs> People I, are um, stupid. I mean, I, Me yeah, Mendez was close for me, but I just, I just like the other, just dirt. 
director just these more. I don't know. Like, um, one snub I was mad about David Robert Mitchell. I, I yeah, I agree with that. For, I so, agree like, with that. That was that was away. great. That was great. He was honestly yeah. like after my five for six. I mean, obviously. I would. I went. Uh, my my four and five were um, Robert Eggers for Lighthouse and Gaspar Noe for Climax. But that was just me. I like those crazy, insane movies. All right. So moving on to the drama, the four Supporting acting drama. drama categories. All right. Starting with the I'm phenomenon, not, gonna... not the actress. That stupid shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I had to. We have Jennifer Lopez. It's fine. No. Nominees for Supporting Actress Drama, Jennifer Lopez, Florence Pugh, Little, Taylor Russell for Waves, Jujin for The Farewell, and Octavia Spencer for Loose. Oh, man. Florence Pugh, Pugh. I'm sorry, that meme was horrible, but it was so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> oh, my God. It was, that was bad. All right, so... Moving on to supporting actor in a drama. I mean, you should cover no down. sh, right? <laughs> um, wow. So moving on, we're, we're really tired. Don't worry, guys. We're almost done with this. Um, moving on to supporting actor in a drama. Um, again, these should come as no shock. Um, the five nominees are Willem Dafoe for The Lighthouse, Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Shia LaBeouf for Honey Boy, Al Pacino for The Irishman, and Joe Pesci for The Irishman. Like. Is anybody shocked at those? Like, the, the, like I feel like that category was like locked up the minute that like yeah. all of those movies came out. Because yeah. before those movies, this category was pretty weak. If I'm being honest, I legitimately don't remember who I had in before any of these guys. And uh, yeah, I don't really care because these guys are all like the, some of the best performances of the year. Forget supporting. Um, all right, so we got three categories left, Chris. Yeah. All right. Uh, the nominees for best actress in the drama. Are Aquafina for The Farewell, Scarlett Hansen for Mary Story, Elizabeth Moss for Her Smell, Florence Pugh for Midsummer, and Shirsha Ronan for Little Women. Um, all right, so double nomination for Scarlett, double nomination for Florence. Uh, the one thing I will say, and this is probably going to make me come off as like really hateful, but I am kind of getting sick of Saoirse Ronan just taking the same kind of roles over and over again and constantly getting awards buzz it's like we get it you play a really great dainty like perfect young girl like you did it compellingly once in atonement when you were like 13 years old fucking can you do a different kind of a role now like could you imagine Saoirse Ronan as like a Kill Bill s character like could you even imagine it or it's like it's so far out of the realm of possibility come on like I can see her doing it Nah, she'll probably just end up in a Marvel movie before anything else. Yeah. Anyway, right, so actor. wrapping this up, actor drama, the big kahuna. Uh, I don't know why I got that from. I'm tired. Don't judge me. But anyway, so the five nominees for actor drama are Robert De Niro for The Irishman, Adam Driver for Marriage Story, Kelvin Harrison Jr. for Waves, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, and Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems. Uh, yeah, the only snub that I, real snub that I would say here is uh, Robert Pattinson for The Lighthouse. Um, I have, I already have my thoughts on both Phoenix and Driver, and I have a little bit of problem with the fact that those two were like the two that were the front runners for the lead acting category. But whatever, I've made my piece with it. I get it. They're still both very good performances, even if one is you know only given half direction and the other one is um just a really good performance and a really like kind of movie that's really only focused on like one sect and kind of loses a lot of relatability as a result but whatever so in order to wrap um, this up chris yeah, I, so i figure I, i'm fine with the actor drama uh, i'm fine with the actor drama nominate yeah they're so good I, um, regardless i uh my snub actually was um I didn't have an actually for the Irish movie, but um I I voted I had I had Brad Pitt for Ad Astra. I think that's a very like a very underrated performance. No, that's a that's a terrific I performance. Think he's mag yeah, All right. He's he's magnificent in the movie. 
Um, anyway, magnets to look at too. Yeah. So to wrap this up, I figure yeah. so real quick for most anal picture or whatever we're gonna call this, I figure we would just kind of alternate between the two of us for each one. So like you start, and then it'll be back to me, and then back and forth. You know, kind of make it even and out. Wrap it up that way. You know. Or you wanna you wanna do the first one? Uh, okay, that'll work. Um. All right, so the first five for our ten choices for most anal picture. Because, I'm, again, unlike the Oscars, we do ten choices, not nine or eight. Because they brought in ten, and then they just only do nine or eight per year. Just, like, make up your mind, Oscar. So the first five are for most anal picture or feature, whatever. I'm tired. Are Booksmart, Best picture. The Irishman. I'll start again. Booksmart, The Irishman, The Lighthouse, Marriage Story, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All right, and then Chris, over to you for the last okay. five. Okay, the remaining five are Parasite, Uncut Gems, Under the Silver Lake, Us, and Way. Where the fuck is cats? Wait, wait, what? Did you say where the fuck is cats? Yeah, where's cats? Cats. Ah, uh, yeah. Quality it's cinema, Tom right Cooper, there. He, he, he yeah, the man. The, yeah, one is like what? what he had the Danish girl, not? right? Fucking man, what are the Oscars doing? It's like the most obvious choice. Uh, but yeah, so those are the official uh, Morgan Selva, J. Freeman man. awards. Yeah, Idris Selva, <laughs> Ian McKellen, right. uh, Judy Dench. Oh God, I don't know. Jason, De, uh, Jason Derulo, man, got fucking <laughs> snubbed. We're like Jason oh, Derulo's no. Oscar for Cats, honestly. Right? We should have oh. nominated him. Just well, because you know what clip they would play if he actually did get a nomination, right? They would just play the milk, which is like, oh, that seems so amazing for so many different reasons. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's just screaming the entire time. I, I still think the double toasted reaction to that first ever Cats trailer might be like the funniest video that they did last year. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, so that was it. Nominees. Those are the I'm first official set. For, um, yes, I will be putting them together in a Google Docs and putting them out at some point later on. And once people have, and I will be putting, and unlike sure. people just in our film circles, I will be putting them out to the full public. So any person that I know of from all over the country, all over the world, I will be encouraging to vote on these docs, and then I'm going to send them over to Chris to count them, because I can't count. I'm just kidding, I can. I'm just lazy, but yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed this first live stream. It didn't go nearly as planned, but we still made it happen, and uh, yeah, that's it. Chris, yep. do you have any closing comments? Any plugs that you want to put in? Uh, any butt plugs? You know, cats for life. Cats, well, that's for later. <laughs> But uh, yeah, choke on, choke, choke on that cat pussy right there. Jason Bateman needs an Oscar soon. Yeah, you know who doesn't need an Oscar? Um, I don't know the movie Cats. Yeah. All right, good night, you peoples. I'll be putting out the right. form soon. All right. Bye. Peace out. Okay. See it.